This is the ROG Flow Z13. It is a Windows gaming tablet which comes with a touch screen, a detachable keyboard which also has a touchpad, a cool design with transparent elements and a built-in kickstand as well. But today, the tablet in my hand is not the main focus of this video. Instead, we are going to take a deeper look at the brand new AMD chip that's powering this gaming tablet. So let's start with the specs. Powering this ROG Flow Z13 is an AMD Ryzen AI Max 390 which is a 12-core chip with 24 threads, up to 5 GHz of boost clock and an AMD Radeon 8050S integrated GPU. So in combination, this setup where the CPU and the GPU are on the same die is known as an APU. Now as per rumors and various reviews, the GPU is supposed to be as powerful as an RTX 4060 or an RTX 4070 laptop GPU. And if these claims are true, that this small tablet is as powerful as a big bulky gaming laptop, then I think PC gaming as we know it is totally about to change. Now, before we move on, let me quickly explain what an APU is and how is it different from your traditional CPU and GPU. And the best example of an APU is a PS5. You see, in a PS5, you have your CPU and your GPU on one singular rectangular shaped die. Now, this is better for data transfer as data only has to transfer a very short distance. This is also better for power efficiency and space saving too because all your processor, your iGPU and all your controllers are on a single die. Meanwhile, in a traditional gaming laptop setup, you have your CPU and GPU in different locations and as a result, they consume more power and they also create two different hotspots in the laptop as well. Chalo, with that explanation out of the way, let's not waste any time and start off with the benchmarks right away. So in Cinebench R23, the AMD chip in the ROG Z Flow 13 scored around 23,000 points in multi-core and around 1,900 points in single-core score. It beats the Intel Core Ultra 9 285H that we tested recently and it also beats the likes of Intel Core i7 13700HX and the i7 14650HX. But if you compare it to Intel's latest Core Ultra 9 275HX series, we can see it lagging much behind. So the performance of the AMD Ryzen AI Max 390 CPU is better than the 13th or 14th gen Core i7HX chips but not better than the Core i9-13950HX or the Intel Core Ultra 9HX series. Now, in terms of temperatures, the maximum temperature the chip reaches under extreme testing is around 85 degrees. Meanwhile, its average temperature is around 80 degrees. Moreover, the CPU package temperature in the 14650HX in the Legion 5i and the 13650HX in the Gigabyte Aura 16 is around 85 and 75 degrees respectively. But as I mentioned before, in traditional gaming laptops, the CPU and GPU are different components and they are installed in different locations and then each of them have their own separate temperatures. But in this case, the 86 degrees is the temperature of the whole CPU package and that includes everything like iGPU, the memory controllers and everything else. So by now, we are starting to get a picture that the AMD Ryzen AI Max 390 is putting out far more performance compared to the power that it is consuming. And things become abundantly clear when we run the 3D Mark Time Spy and Fire Strike. So in this one, finally you can see that the Radeon 8050S iGPU is slightly less powerful than an NVIDIA RTX 4060 which has a 140W TGP. So it seems that the claims of the AMD Ryzen chip being as powerful as an RTX 4060 laptop are true but with a slight pinch of salt. Also note that the model that we are testing and the only model which is available in India is not the top spec chip because that would be AMD Ryzen AI Max plus 395 and that one has an even more powerful Radeon 8060S iGPU which has a much higher graphics core count of 40. However, one area where this iGPU struggles a bit is in terms of ray tracing performance. As you can see, it is lagging behind the RTX 4060 significantly in 3D Mark's Port Royale ray tracing test. But benchmarks aside, let's see how this thing performs in real world gaming tests. So first up is Dirt 5 and in that one the ROG Flow Z13 scored 104 FPS at high settings. The game is running at 1200p and it is running without any hiccups or stuttering. And the best thing is that the CPU package temperature is not even crossing 79 degrees Celsius. 
Next up is Metro Exodus and in this game the Flo Z13 scored around 85 fps and this too ran at high settings at 1200p and also ran pretty smoothly. Now this is one of those games which brings every kind of gaming laptop to its knees. However, the overall CPU package temperature is still under 80 degrees which is very nice. Now next up I tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1200p at high settings and it scored 117 fps and over here too the temperatures remained pretty solid. After that I tested Gears 5 at 1200p high settings and it scored around 121 fps. So overall here's how the ROG Flow Z13 performs compared to two of the most popular RTX 4060 laptops and as you can see there is a noticeable difference between the two and the RTX 4060 is still in the lead by a decent margin but the entire thing completely changes when we look at the final power consumption of all these devices while the gaming laptops consume upwards of 170 watts and 180 watts The gaming tablet is only consuming 70 watts in total in turbo mode which is 100 watts lower compared to other gaming laptops and that my friends is game changing chalo with the performance out of the way let's take a good look at the tablet as well so the detachable keyboard and the touchpad are decent i mean without the lack of a solid support underneath the typing experience isn't that great especially if you have big hands The touchpad is also serviceable but it feels a little laggy compared to touchpad on a normal gaming laptop. You can very easily attach and detach the flip keyboard simply by pulling it away or taking it close to the tablet and the magnets are also decently strong as you need two hands to pull it away from the tablet. And in terms of IO ports on the right side you get USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A port and on the left side you get an HDMI 2 USB 4 type C ports with 40 Gbps speed. Display port 2.1 and USB PD 3.0. Now here's one interesting thing: the Z Flow 13 does not have a Thunderbolt 5 port, but the new XG Mobile E GPU does have a Thunderbolt 5 port. And Thunderbolt 5, as I have already explained in my previous videos, gives you as much bandwidth as a traditional PCI Express connection. So because of the AMD chip you are getting a superb gaming tablet on its own but you will be losing out on performance when you connect it with the latest Asus XG Mobile external eGPU because of lack of Thunderbolt 5 and that's something which is totally unavoidable Care towards the back you get a pretty sturdy kickstand I mean you can very easily handle the tablet using it and it can go all the way back and can keep the tablet pretty much flat on the table and over this entire back area you have your air vents and because of this you can very easily keep this tablet on a soft surface like your bed or sofa and play games without worrying about blocking any air flow and losing performance you also have these transparent elements at the back which have been a design staple since many generations now and as for the display you have a 13.4 inch ips level wqxga 1600p display which although is a bit glossy but has pretty good viewing angles now in terms of peak brightness the display emits 518 nits of peak luminance it also has 99% srgb and 95% dcip3 color space coverage In terms of color accuracy it has a delta E value of just 1.5 which is very good and makes this display highly suitable for creative workflows Now the display also has a maximum of 180 hertz refresh rate along with dynamic refresh rate feature which is pretty useful in conserving battery life The front camera is serviceable at best because despite the 1440p resolution and decent indoor lighting the resulting image still feels a bit grainy and lacking sharpness Now the rear camera is much better it allows for up to 4K 30 fps recording along with digital video stabilization feature as well the resulting footage is really at the level of your average smartphone and i think that's a pretty neat feature to have Now in terms of physical button you get a power button a volume button and also a button to activate Asus screen share expert now it is a software which helps you manage app windows across multiple displays and in case you want to upgrade the SSD all you need to do is remove this screw at the back and easily upgrade your storage and lastly in terms of sound quality here's how the ROG Z Flow 13 performs
In conclusion, so in this review, we evaluated two things. The AMD Ryzen AI Max 390 chip and the Asus ROG Flow Z13 tablet. So the tablet itself is pretty much what you expect. I mean, it's a Windows gaming tablet, it has good airflow, it is pretty portable and it has pretty neat features like physical buttons and a rear camera. However, the AMD Ryzen chip is absolutely phenomenal. You see, AMD has packed in an RTX 4060 gaming laptop worth of power in a single chip, which not only uses less power, but also runs below 85 degrees Celsius even in the most extreme of conditions. This is not just a chip, this is a revolution, because this chip is perfect for a thin and light laptop like Asus Zephyrus G16, because even in that device, you'll get gaming laptop performance because of this chip. And I can very easily see this chip in a handheld gaming console, maybe even the next Steam Deck or the ROG Ally. And in that form factor, this chip will absolutely dominate. But I think the last form factor in which I would want to see this chip is in a gaming tablet. But that's what we have at this moment. And I think that's the irony of this video. So that was it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.